Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here to talk to you about real versus fake. And I have a question for you. Are you a phony? Are you a hypocrite? Have you ever run into hypocrites? How did you know? Yeah, well, I just want to share with you that sometimes the phoniness of people can literally block a soul from entering into the kingdom of heaven. And the reason I say that, I'm not saying it stops them from going to heaven. Entering into the kingdom. The kingdom is here on earth. The kingdom is within us. Okay. So there are times when we want to enter in. We want to get to know God personally. We want Jesus as our Lord and Savior. But what holds us back, especially when we have 10 million questions on top of the doubt that we carry, is when we look at someone who says they're a Christian and they turn around and after talking about how wonderful God is, you watch somebody make them angry and they're cussing them out worse than you do. And you're looking at them saying, hmm, I thought there was supposed to be a change when you gave your heart to the Lord. Where's the change? I don't see any evidence that you are a Christian other than lip service. Yeah. Now, I just did a video a little while back, uh, the, earlier this evening, and the video d dealt with hair. Now, when I walk down the street or I'm in a store or whatever, it's natural to want people to think this is my hair. Because it's a presentation, it's a public presentation. I'm representing me when I do my hair. Listen to this. I have hair. <laughs> you know I have hair, I've shown you. But the problem is, if it looks fake, it turns people off, doesn't it? If it looks like a wig, it's a big turn off. I don't want that big old wig on my head. If it looks like a weave, I don't want to go to your hairdresser. Well, what makes you think people want to go to our God when we act like a hypocrite? When we look like a hypocrite? When we look phony and act phony and speak out, we speak with forked tongue. My husband used to call it talking out of both sides of your neck. I mean, what makes you think that you can draw people to the Lord when you are pushing them away simply with your attitude? Now, your attitude might be good towards them, but they see how your attitude is towards other people. And they're looking around like, I don't want anybody to know I know this person. Well, that doesn't make God feel good either. Because God's not that excited about people knowing that <laughs> you know him either. <laughs> Think about that. When you are out in public, your character represents God. When you are presenting yourself, you represent yourself. But part of you is representing God, even in your physical presentation. Because if you're walking around saying you're called to the ministry and 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 you're studying the Bible and you, you're going to church and you're doing this ministry and that ministry, you're doing Bible study and oh, you're learning about the things of God and you're walking around looking like you're selling boop and you're, and you're selling that and you're shaking it and baking it and hey baby, you want some of this. And that's the way you look because it's the way you dress. So your presentation and your words are contradictory. The Bible calls that crucifying Jesus afresh and bringing him to an open shame. That's what the Bible calls it. Because you're misrepresenting. You're claiming the name. But everything in you is diametrically opposed. You're dressed. 12 inches of boobs and cleavage. 
boobs hanging out of here and boobs hanging out of there. And oh, yeah, you're showing the world your stuff because you happen to be sexy. Okay. I'm happy for you. But what are you doing? How are you representing God? Sometimes it's better not to tell people you're a Christian until you really start getting it together because we all start somewhere. Some of us start further back or further down. So we have a much longer way to come. And it may be a good idea to start getting your walk together and your talk together and everything else before you start advertising for God. Because I'm going to tell you, if I'm in the mood for a taco or a donut or a, a new cup of coffee, a new flavor of coffee, and somebody hands me that item in a raggedy plate, the food looks like it's been left over from last night, didn't even put it in the fridge, and I'm looking at it like, I don't want to eat this mess. How could they use this as advertisement? I'm not coming here anymore. Well, guess what? A lot of people say that about the kingdom. I don't want that. I can do all, I can do lousy all by myself. I can be hung up, strung up, strung out, tied down, locked up, shut up, whatever. I could be messed up all by myself. I do not need God for that. Not your God. So, all I say is be careful how you represent. Please. Because it's not what you're representing, it's who you're representing. And we want to draw people to God, not swap them away like flies. Be very careful how you represent your Father, which art in heaven. God bless you.